Hey, it's Nick here, and today I'm going to be trying to make my own brayer. And so, for me, I've been kind of finding a lack of uh, options for brayers in the market. Uh, you kind of got those really cheap ones that uh, you see on Amazon, uh, and they're really hard. They're not really great for printmaking. Uh, and then you move up to these speedball ones uh, for the price. They're like the cheapest, you know, of the market, and the rubber is actually soft. You can actually print with these, unlike the hard ones. Uh, but for things like lithography, uh, you kind of want a softer brayer so it can kind of conform to the texture of the stone to really get into that you know, grain. Uh, and so Speedball makes these nice like big ones, but uh, if you're like me, you know, you're very disappointed by the uh, diameter and the rollout of this brayer. Uh, it's only about one inch in diameter, and so then it gives you about uh, three inches, a little over three inches of rollout. And so, you know, you can essentially ink up three inch by six inch area. Uh, and you find that if you're trying to ink a large area with a uh, litho, uh, once you do your first pass with your brayer, uh, the, the surface of your brayer is coated with water. And that kind of inhibits your brayer from laying down ink uh, the rest of the travel, you know, distance. And so, you know, it speeds up inking a lot, unlike, you know, when you print relief and stuff like that. And so I decided to make my own brayer that had a huge rollout. Uh, that way I can kind of, uh, I really wanted to ink up my entire image without having to have lap marks or, you know, overlapping it. And so uh, it's just a little bit wider at uh, seven inches wide, but it has much more rollout because of this three inch diameter. Uh, it gives me over th uh, nine inches of rollout. And so my... Uh, I'm going to do a lot of six inches by eight inches uh, with those because just is how big my press can accommodate uh, image wise. And so I figured I'd make a special brayer just so I can, I can do that really well. So let's get into it. So I can't take all the credit for this process of how to make a brayer. Uh, I was at MAPC this year and Ross Mazapio held a demonstration on how he makes his brayers and rollers. And when I saw this rubber at Dick Blick, uh, it kind of gave me that push to finally just kind of go ahead and make it. Uh, and so uh, there's a few differences though. Uh, Ross Mazapio has a laser cutter. Uh, I do not. And he is a bit more concerned with making printmaking kind of affordable and accessible. And I wanted to make a balls to the wall, you know, perfect rare for me. So essentially, I have this acrylic tube, which is going to serve as the outer part of the mold. And I have this dowel rod uh, for the inner part of the mold, uh, which will be the part that I get to screw into. And it'll help me save some money on rubber uh, so I don't have to fill the whole thing with rubber. So I'm just going to slot into here like this and about you know half of an inch between the inside dowel rod to the you know, outer cores. I was going to use this PVC pipe for the outer half of the mold, but uh, I started feeling the inside of it. And it really kind of has a like a rough feeling. It's not a smooth texture to the inside, which I'm sure would work fine in practice, but I kind of wanted like a perfectly round brayer. And so because I don't have a laser cutter to create myself a jig that holds everything in place nicely, I'm going to try and do my best by printing off a template and gluing everything down to that. So I'm going to take my calipers and kind of measure the core and I'm going to measure the kind of the outside of the mold and I'm going to plot these into Photoshop and then I'm going to print off onto this uh, clear transparency and then just line everything up as best as I can and then I guess I'm just going to take my core uh, slap it with some spray adhesive and then line it up as best as I can and I'm not too worried about getting it a hundred percent center uh, because I'm going to try and center it after I've casted the whole thing uh, together. And then next up, I'm going to loop up the outer part of this mold. And so this uh, mold release says to spray it and then to hit it with a brush to make sure it gets even coverage and then to spray it again. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to hot glue it down to uh, my little piece of transparency. 
Uh, and then it's only spraying the outside part because I don't really want it to slip off the inner core, but I do want to remove this plexi outer casing of it. And so I knew from the bottom, if I followed the diagram, it would be about you know a half inch around all the way. But I didn't know that for the top, I was afraid it was a little bit skewed. And so I made these little spacers, uh, the little shims of matte board, about half an inch thick. And so I have them placed all around the center core. And this will kind of ensure that it is uh, you know, equal spaced around it. So now it's time to mix the rubber. And so I'm going to use just one container because I don't really feel like cleaning up two containers. I know you're supposed to pour it and measure it in two separate containers and then mix them together into a third separate container. Uh, but I didn't really feel like that. And so I was just going to kind of eyeball all it. And so I did some quick math. Uh, basically, I took the volume of the uh, outer casing of the mold and the volume of the inner core, and I subtracted the inner core from the outer core, and that gave me kind of a rough approximation for uh, how much liquid I was going to need. And so about 16 ounces. And so that's what I was going to shoot for. If I have a little bit extra, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And so after a thorough mixing, I'm going to go ahead and pour it into my mold. And I'm going to do a really high kind of barista pour. And so th what this is going to do is string that urethane rubber. And so this uh, string is going to get really thin and that's going to force all of the air bubbles that I might have mixed in uh, out to the surface of that string. And hopefully they don't go like, you know, inside of the rubber. And so this rubber has a 16 hour cure time. And so I'm just going to come back the next day and it's been about 17 hours. So I'm just going to go ahead and demold this. And I took a little bit of figuring out, but it actually just kind of pushed out really nice and simple. Uh, it took a bit of force. You know, at first I was a little bit afraid of breaking it, but it worked out great. And so then I had to clean off this kind of top side. Uh, there was a little bit of a raised lip around the edge of the rubber uh, just because of that, you know, uh, adhesion to the wall of the mold and the excess core and so my plan was just to cut it off with a miter saw uh, and in retrospect maybe I should have let this uh, kind of cure outside of the mold for an extra day or two I think it was a little bit too soft and squishy uh, and it made a lot of smoke maybe that's just how it is um, but the cuts a little bit rough but all in all it did work uh, it's, it's kind of it's cut and now for the handle and I wanted to work with the brass just because I really like that black and gold kind of aesthetic and so I'm going to take this little like flat strip of brass I got from the hardware store drill some holes into the ends where the, the axle where this is going to go and then I'm going to kind of bend it into this u-shape for the frame and then I'm going to cut some round stock uh, for the, kind of the connector bit in the handle and then I'm going to take this bit of you know, one inch dowel rod and this is going to be the foundation of the handle. And so a little bit of epoxy and shoving this handle onto the dowel rod. And then I can shove this into the chuck of my drill and kind of hopefully make chick lathe uh, this into a more ergonomic handle. And it kind of worked. You know, not my finest work, but uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit better. And I wish I had a TIG welder, uh, but I don't. So I'm going to try and solar solder uh, these two things together because that's what's at the local hardware store. Uh, and hopefully it's going to be strong enough to get this done. And I accidentally forgot to degrease the surfaces this time. So that it'll cut work out. So attempt number two. And it's stronger than I thought. And now for the trickiest part of this whole operation, uh, finding the exact center of this brayer. And so this is the main reason why I put off doing this project for so long, uh, because without a laser cutter or any sort of you know lathe, uh, it's going to be a bit tricky to find the exact center of it. Uh, but I did see this trick where you can kind of take this speed square, and then if you take the lines, I'm going to trace this right here, rotate it a bit, trace another line. Uh, it should be the center of 
of the core. And then a little bit of paint and a little bit of lacquer for the handle. And we've got ourselves something nice going on. And so it's time for the final assembly. And I kind of splurged a bit, got myself some nice brass bolts and some nylon washers for the friction, uh, just to kind of match the aesthetic. And now let's put it all together. Not too shabby. That might be a problem though. I ended up filing off the top of the handle, that way you can lay flat on the table. And now, moment of truth. Let's roll out some ink. And to be honest, this is performing way better than I thought. The ability to cover my entire image with one pass is a convenience I did not know I wanted. But it's not without its flaws. I think I was a little bit off uh, when I was kind of centering up these holes. Maybe I put the screws in uh, not quite so center, or maybe it's kind of a traveling across the threads of these bolts because definitely I can hear it doing that uh, and so that causes this to not uh, kind of spin perfectly you know in a circle it's a little bit off balanced uh, but in practice I cannot feel uh, that at all and it feels like a perfectly smooth motion when I'm rolling out ink and then secondly uh, one thing I wish I didn't do uh, was kind of brush the mold release across the acrylic tube uh, it released quite well and the instructions said to do it but it did leave this kind of texture to the surface of the brayer and now in practice uh, this does not show up in my slab or on my stone so it's not that big of a deal but it does just kind of you know make this a little bit less pretty so overall was it worth it i spent a lot of money on this uh, just not only on the rubber but there's a lot of pieces like this dowel rod uh, and the handle I probably could have done better and the brass where I just had to buy bigger pieces uh, you know I have enough supplies to make two grayers uh, with everything that I bought but you know if I only wanted one and I don't know why I would want two of these massive grayers because I can't be printed twice at once uh, you know I'm just in the studio by myself and so I don't really need a second one. I might make a second one and sell it, but if I were to make two, uh, these costs would definitely kind of uh, you know, make more sense. But as it stands, it was one expensive brayer, but because there's nothing else like it on the market, I think it was worth it. Uh, you know, those tackish sprayers don't have quite as much uh, rollout as this one does. It's just a little bit shy of what I wanted it to be able to do. And I think rollers, are just a little bit too cumbersome uh, for you know me and my small print shop. I really like having a brayer in one hand, and a sponge in the other hand, and that way I can ink up and sponge, and it doesn't really friction up my hand. You know, if you have to um, print lithos by yourself with a roller, you know the water from the sponge really kind of grips the rollers uh, as you ink up, and it's a lot more uncomfortable because I think a brayer kind of solves that issue. So. I'm really happy with it. In the end, I think it was worth it uh, because there's nothing else like it. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, the black and gold is really my aesthetic, and so I really like looking at this brass. And so, hopefully, this might inspire some of you to make it, uh, make your own brayers. So, thanks for coming along for this adventure. I'll see you next week.